In this video, I'm going to talk about everything that's wrong with marine VHF radios. I don't like these, and I'll tell you why. First, let me do this short disclaimer before I upset too many people right away. This video is from a recreational boater perspective. I fully understand how useful and effective VHF radios are for commercial boaters. As a matter of fact, I watch another YouTuber, Tim B at Sea, operating his commercial vessel and why and how they use their VHF radios, and it totally makes sense for me. But from a recreational boater perspective, it's very, very different. I have been boating for a couple of years now, purely as a recreational boater, and I've always had a VHF radio. My first boat had a fixed mount VHF radio, and then when I got my second boat, it didn't have one, so I bought this portable one, and I'll explain why I just have a portable one later in this video. I always carry a VHF radio with me whenever I'm out in the water. And I keep it on, tuned to channel 16, except for whenever I'm checking the weather. So I do use my VHF radio. Unfortunately for recreational boaters, VHF radios are our best option for making it a distress call when we're out in the water. Especially if you consider if you're boating in an area outside of cell phone range, like you're out there in the open ocean. The Coast Guard monitors channel 16, as do many commercial boaters, fishing boats, and sailboaters. There is no doubt in many potential situations, it is your best option for seeking out help if you really do need it on open waters. It might be our best bet, but I don't think a standard VHF radio is our best solution for many recreational boaters. And here's why. In the 21st century, these things have a pretty steep learning curve. It's like people who know how to play guitar. They'll say, oh, it's easy. They forget that they had to practice for quite a while to become good at guitar. There's all these channels and protocols, and you have to be careful what you say and where you use it. Now, for those of us who ever played with walkie-talkies as a kid, or ever had a CB radio, using a VHF radio is quite similar to that. But Quite frankly, nowadays, there's a whole lot of people who never had walkie-talkies, never played with a CB radio, and the push to talk of these types of devices is quite foreign to them. And it's really not quite as intuitive as anybody who's played with push to talk devices their whole life would think it is. Once again, just like playing guitar. If you're a guitar player, you think it's quite intuitive. But for people who don't play guitar, Putting their hands on that fretboard is not something that's natural to them. And here's why I think that that's a real problem. Because if there's an emergency situation on my boat and I am going back to check why water is coming into my engine bay or putting out a fire, and I ask the other person on my boat to make a distress call, if they've never used a push to talk device, whether it's a fixed mount or a handheld, they're gonna have problems with it. Some people don't even realize that you push to talk and then you let go of the button to listen and push to talk again. And even if I showed somebody how to use it once or twice, they're gonna have problems remembering how to do it in an emergency panic situation. Number two, you can't hear it. Sure, if I'm stopped with my engines off and there's no wind noise or whatever, I certainly can hear my VHF radio just fine, whether it's a fixed mount or portable one. But when you're in an open boat, like many recreational boats, if I have this sitting right next to the helm with the speaker turned all the way up and I'm underway, there's a lot of times I can hear somebody is transmitting, but I can't exactly make out what they're saying until I pick the radio up and literally put it to my ear. Sometimes, if it's a single call, by the time I get it up to my ear, They've already finished saying what they were saying. Now, of course, if it's a Mayday call, the reason a Mayday call is structured the way it is is it gives you time to actually pay attention to it and tune into it. And that's great. But in a recreational open boat, you can't really hear these. Now, in a commercial boat, where you're in a cockpit area where it's enclosed, you certainly can hear these radios just fine. I've actually been on some commercial vessels and I've seen videos like Tim B at Sea, and I can hear his radios just fine because he's enclosed in an area where he can hear these. But when you're out in your recreational sport boat, motoring around the river in the bay, being able to hear this is really hard. And that's actually one reason why I never got a fixed mount one for my new boat. Because what I found is that unless I fixed that radio right at ear level, I'm not gonna be able to hear it that well. 
So that's why I stick with the portable one because I can keep that in the cup holder right next to my wheel. And whenever I hear somebody transmitting, I can pick it up and put it to my ear. Now, of course, in a distress call situation, my engine probably wouldn't be running. So there wouldn't be wind noise and engine noise. So I'm much more likely to be able to successfully make a call, be able to listen to instructions from the Coast Guard. The Mayday Call. Have you ever had to make a Mayday Call? Let me know down in the comments below. I, I hope I never have to make a Mayday Call. But obviously a Mayday Call is your best chance to get help to you quickly if you're in a situation where you're taking on water or there's something else going on in your boat. Many of you probably know the Mayday Call protocol, which is this. Do you see one of the big problems here? Let's say you're a commercial boater and you're on the pilot vessel Fells Point. You can say, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is pilot vessel Fells Point. But if my wife and I are out on our bow rider boat, which is not a named and registered vessel, what does she say? Is she supposed to run up to the bow and lean over and try to read the letters and numbers written on the bow of my boat? And if so, is she supposed to know the phonetic alphabet, you know, Alpha Bravo? Because technically that's the best way to be understood. And so that's one of the things that I think is really challenging because with a commercial vessel, you know that you're on the Fells Point and it's easy for you to remember that and say that and repeat that on a Mayday call. But trying to remember that you are MD1234CH is kind of tricky to remember. And once again, without using the phonetic alphabet and saying your numbers correctly, it may be tricky for somebody to understand. Now I know that some of you right now are losing your mind because you think to yourself, Everybody who goes out in the water should take a boater safety course and should understand all of this and know all of this information. But the reality is both the federal laws and my local state level laws do not require recreational boaters for boats under 65 feet or 20 meters in length to even have a VHF radio, let alone know how to use one. So next we come to the rules and requirements. Here in the USA, both federally and on the state level, we're not required to take any training to use a VHF radio. And if we have a boat under 65 feet, we're not even required to have a VHF radio. I think in some other countries, you are required to have a license to operate a VHF radio. And some of the rules and requirements might be more strict for being a boat operator. With a VHF radio being our best option for getting help, which I believe it is, isn't it kind of weird that we don't require more from our boaters? Another thing is we can't even really play and practice with this. The rule book that came with this says that I'm actually restricted from using a VHF radio on land. Now I know people do use them on land, but technically you're not even supposed to use it on land. So you can't even really play around with your radio unless you're on the water. And even in the best boater safety class, you may be practicing this once or twice not like a commercial boater who may be communicating with one of these things on a daily basis and becomes very comfortable with using a VHF radio. Advancing technology. Some newer handhelds and mounted VHF radios now have DSC, Digital Selective Calling, and GPS, which is Global Positioning. When I bought this radio here, I didn't know that you could get a handheld VHF radio with DSC and GPS. Had I known that, I would have spent the extra to get those features. The way DSC works is that whenever you get a radio that is equipped with DSC, you can register your boat through a service which gives it a special unique identifier number and they know what kind of boat you have, what your hull ID is, and all those kinds of things. And that unique identifier, when you make a DSC call, it gives the Coast Guard that particular information. So by pressing one button on a DSC equipped radio, when you have everything set up properly, allows this distress call to be made. Why wouldn't anybody who boats in any kind of open water want that kind of VHF radio? But once again, we don't require it. And you have to kind of figure this stuff out to even know that. Had I known that when I bought this, I definitely would have gone that route and not got this particular VHF radio right here, but one with a single DSC button. 
because in an event of emergency, I know that I could easily just press that button and be transmitting to the Coast Guard or that my wife could press that button. That's a lot easier than trying to explain to them how to make a Mayday call. And because in the US, since we don't have laws about these kinds of things, a lot of it's very open for recreational boaters. And one thing that is a law here in the US for recreational boaters is the engine cutoff switch or emergency cutoff switch. Here's a video about that right here that you should check out. Maybe I'll just keep this for my little boat and get a better one for my big boat.